Welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. We are Teach the Shoah, and this is Light from the Darkness, a ritual for Holocaust remembrance. If you have the book, we will be starting on page two. If you don't, don't worry. Um, it'll be up on the screen for you to follow along. As with all Jewish ceremonies, this is an interactive participatory event. Please join us in all the readings and rituals as much as you are able. Um, please keep yourself on mute throughout so we don't have the time delay when you read along, um, but feel free to add your thoughts to the chat at any time. We have been broken. Part of us will always be broken. We gather each precious shard to and piece them together to create a new vessel that will hold our love and our pain. We find that we are somehow whole and broken at the same time. We discover glimmers of holiness in the cracks for it is through these jagged windows that we see the paths to building a better world. There is more to a broken vessel than the hammer that shattered it. Read with me. Even when we are enveloped by evil, we hold on to our humanity and our faith. We emerge as a Jewish people strengthened in our resolve to remain Jews. The thread of Jewish life was and still is strong. Violet, would you light candles for us, please? Make sure you come off mute. Violet, I can't hear you. Oh, it's okay, I have um, a glitch. Ah, great. But as all good things, we will move along. These mismatched candlesticks remind us of the resilience that our ancestors have always shown in dark times. They may do with what they had. They never gave up their determination to hold on to their Judaism. We take inspiration from their resilience and from those who found the strength to stand when standing seemed impossible. If you have candles, please light them with us now. Read with me. We light these candles 
for the light that shines in the hearts of all who fight against evil. For a single candle can both defy and define the darkness. Michael? We begin our story in the light. We remember not so long ago, many of our mothers and our fathers, our sisters and our brothers lived in the land of Europe. We were Jews of many different sorts. We were secular and religious. We lived in towns and cities. We lived in many countries around the world. We spoke many different languages. We were doctors and dressmakers, printers and poets, scientists and shopkeepers, weavers and welders. We were a warm family whose life followed a quiet, carefree routine. Our roots reached back generation upon generation, living there amongst <coughs> friends, neighbors, and acquaintances. With this loving background, the years flowed peacefully, Miriam Yachab. But an ancient hatred, unashamed, was emerging in the shadows, and we did not recognize the approaching danger. We thought that the world had evolved beyond such ignorance. Jennifer, would you lead us through the rosemary and the wine, please? If you have rosemary or another fragrant spice, take some and smell it now. The fragrant rosemary recalls for us the joys of an ordinary life. Say with me, we remember the sweet, flavorful life we had before the darkness fell. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Horei Mine Isamim. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, ruler of the universe, who creates many different spices. Raise your wine glass and say with me, we drink a cup of wine in celebration of that ordinary life. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Pari HaGafen. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. L'chaim to life. We must be watchful. When we ignore the rising shadows of hatred, they engulf us. We remember, hatred spread across Germany like poison in water. The Germans afflicted us with cruel laws and humiliations. They did not care who we were or what we did. They did not care whether we were religious or secular, from the city or from the country civilian or soldier, only that we were Jews. The Psalms reflect our anguish. Every day they make my words sorrowful. All their thoughts about me are for evil. They gather and hide, they watch my steps. They hope to capture my soul. Lila? Trouble does not begin with fanfare but as a storm building in the distance, we remember every day they keep in, sorry, issuing new laws against Jews. Today, for example, they took all the appliances away from us, sewing machines, the radio, telephone, the vacuum clear, the electric fryer, my camera, my bicycle, Aggie said. We should be happy they're taking things away and not people. Eva Heyman, Romania. In the overcrowded ghettos, we lamented, a f I feel as if I am in a box. There's no air to breathe. Wherever you go, you encounter a gate that hems you in. I feel as if I've been robbed. My freedom is being robbed from me. My home, the familiar streets, I love so much. I've been cut off from all that is dear and precious to me. 
Yitzhak Rudashevsky, Lithuania. Throughout our time tonight, we will be hearing short stories from the lives of people who experienced the Holocaust. Our first story comes from the life of Yanis Korshak. Yanis Korshak was a well-known educator, author, and radio show host, famous for his work promoting the rights of children. He ran a home for orphans in Warsaw. Michael? They stole my potatoes. Not one, not two, but all of them. It's bad enough that they're making me move my home for orphans into the ghetto. But stealing from children? We packed everything that we needed to create a life of dignity in the ghetto for our children. Pictures, toys, books, pots of flowers, and enough potatoes to feed all of the children for the whole winter. Yesterday, the children paraded in twos and we paraded through Warsaw into the ghetto. But the guard at the ghetto gate took the whole wagon of potatoes. I promised that guard I would report him to his superiors. He told me, go see the Gestapo. So that's what I'm doing. I walked into Gestapo headquarters and I am waiting for the commandant. I've lived under German rule before during the Great War. They're reasonable people. I think this office is different. There's the desk with the neat paper and nice clean rows. And then there's the glass front bookcase with no paper, no books, just bull whips and blunt hammers. But I'm Janusz Korczak, the famous old doctor. People love me for my radio show, for my lectures, for my books, my work with children. I'll make it work. I have to. We need those potatoes. Ah, here's the officer. I give him my papers. Sir, I am Janusz Korczak, the head of the home for orphans in the ghetto. Your soldier stole our wagon of potatoes. It is essential that the confiscated food be returned to the children immediately. He compliments me on my excellent German and asks me, why am I so concerned about Jewish orphans? And then he looks at my papers. It says here that you're Jewish. Where's your arm band? Don't you know you're breaking the law? I refuse to wear a Jewish star. There are human laws that are transitory and there are higher laws that are eternal. I learned that day that the Nazis do not care about higher laws. I was beaten. I starved in prison for months. I heard gunfire every day in the prison yard and told stories to the prisoners every night until one of my admirers on the outside was able to bribe my release. I limped home to my children. We never got our potatoes, but we'll make do. We always have. As long as we can take care of our children, so long as we can protect our little ones, we can still have hope as a people. As long as we have hope, then I'm willing to keep going on. Thank you, Michael. Would you lead us through the potato skins, please? The tears of the ghetto? If you have potato skins, Take one and dip it in salt water. These potato skins remind us that in the deprivation of the ghetto, we ate whatever we could find. The salt water in which we dip them recalls our tears. Together, 
we dip to remember our starvation, evoking the salt of our tears and the hardship we endured. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Borei pri Adama. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, rule of the universe, who creates the fruit of the earth. Lynn, would you lead us through the Kiddush in the ghetto? We remember, even in the ghetto, we celebrated Shabbat. We found, however, that wine for Kiddush was often impossible to get. The rabbis ruled that sweet tea could be substituted. Let's together say, we drink this tea in memory of the Kiddush wine we could not have. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, she'akol niya b'dvaro. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, ruler of the universe, by whose word everything comes into being. Violet? We remember, holding on to the hope that we might one day be reunited, we sent our children into hiding. A few were sent to safety beyond the borders. Others found hiding places with friends, neighbors, strangers. As mommy and Omi waved to me, I chose to hide my tears and I smiled. I wanted to give them strength. Ruth Westheimer. At this point, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Normally we have a, a child's drawing as you see here, um, but today we're going to, to take a piece of paper. So I want you to, to take a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and on it, I want you to write a hope for the future, a personal hope or a hope for community. These notes represent our hope for our children and our faith in the future. Hope and faith may seem frail comfort, but they are steel girders that give us the strength to stand. As we did in the time of trouble, we now conceal our hope in a secret place to keep it safe. May we find it again at the end of our journey. Let us hide our hope Protect these notes until we are once again safe and we can reveal our hope and our faith to the world. So now take that note and hide it in a safe place where you'll be able to find it later. Violet, would you lead us through the oranges? Yes. Yeah. The hidden sweetness. If you have oranges, please take a piece of it now. Hope can be a sweetness that lies beneath bitterness. Hope for our children's future, that we would see them again, that this horror would end. Together, please. We eat this orange whose bitter rind hides sweet fruit to remember that sweet hope can hide beneath bitterness. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe who creates the fruit of the trees. Words fail us as we begin to speak of the dark, darkest times. We remember the Germans with willing partners murdered us in staggering numbers. Mass graves filled the forests of Europe. 
My heart shudders within me, and the, terror, the terrors of death have descended upon me. Fear and trembling penetrated me, <clears throat> and I am enveloped with horror. Palms 55. We were murdered without mercy, mothers and fathers, children and grandparents. We were murdered simply for being Jews. The Germans forced us from our homes into ghettos, into slave labor camps, and into death chambers. In our blind ignorance, we thought that deportation was a better solution. Fools that we were, we thought that the ghetto was the ultimate and abysmal, abysmal blackness. We did not know that from here on, we would be severed and cut off from everything that was familiar and dear to us. We did not know that from that train ride on, we would be robbed of our whole world. Sarah Selver, Poland. Lynn, would you lead us through the lost communities? Please refill your wine cups, but do not drink. We grieve as we remember the vibrant Jewish communities that were destroyed. If you have the name of a community that was lost, please share it with us in the chat. A cry is heard in Ramah, wailing, bitter weeping, Rachel weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children who are gone. Jeremiah 31. Read with me. We spill drops of wine to remember the blood that was spilled, the whole communities that were destroyed. The losses diminish our lives as we diminish the wine in our glasses. Let these few represent for us the many. For each of these communities, we will dip our finger and spill a drop of wine. Repeat after me. Warsaw, Sarajevo, Wien, Chelem, Thessaloniki, Kielce, Riga, Weisbaden, Kiev, Praha. And from the chat, Lvov, Wakiot, Dachau, Babiar, Auschwitz, Tordia. Custodia. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Clave, I 
we pause in terror before the human deed, the cloud of annihilation, the concentration of death, the cruelly casual way of each to each. But in the stillness of this hour, we find our way from darkness into light. Michael? We remember, despite our enemy's eagerness to strip us of our Judaism and of our humanity, we continue to educate our children, to celebrate our holidays, to love and to help each other. Although prayer was forbidden, we prayed in secret communities and within the secret places in our hearts. Our faith was the one thing they did not take from us, Rivka Wagner. Hidden between the bunks, we whispered the familiar words of the Friday evening prayers and found tranquility. I discovered for the first time in my life the real power and value of prayer and faith in God. I could feel the words shattering the iron gates, the high-powered fences, going past the hundreds of guards, dugouts, and watchtowers, out into the open, reaching towards heaven. Here, I knew was a way of escape, a source of strength and means of survival of which no power on earth could deprive me. Simcha Unsdorfer. In the ghetto, a young boy defied the bitterness. From tomorrow on, I shall be sad. From tomorrow on, today I will be happy. What's the use of sadness? Tell me that. Because the evil winds begin to blow? Why should I grieve for tomorrow? Today? No, today, I will be glad. And every day, no matter how bitter it be, I will say from tomorrow on, I shall be sad. Not today. Model, a child in the ghetto. Many have tried to destroy us. Pharaoh. Amalek, Haman, Caesar, the Inquisition, the Nazis. None have succeeded. In the Torah, we are commanded, choose life so that you and your children shall live. Join me. As long as that secret power is concealed within us, we shall not yield to despair. I am Jack Kaplan. As we fight physical, mental, and spiritual battles, we cry out against the generation old refrain, chayim, to life. We continue to live our Judaism and not let the evil destroy our faith in God or in humanity. Our next story is a brief scene from the life of Rabbi Sinai Adler. Sinai was born in Prague in 1928. In 1943, he was deported with his parents, the Therizat ghetto. From there, he was sent to Auschwitz, Birkenau, and eventually to Mauthausen camp. Hey, buddy, you know what, you know what today is? Today is the first night of Passover, or it would be in normal places. Not so much here, not in the camp. Last year, last year I was in Theresienstadt in the ghetto with my parents, with my family. We had, we had a Seder of sorts. It was a little odd. It was during the day because we couldn't light candles or anything in, after dark. But we had matzah. We had tea with jam instead of wine. And we were together. But tonight, 
We have nothing. But I don't wanna let this night pass unmarked. So walk with me. So we walk and we remember the Haggadah as much as we can. And for just a moment in that place where our bodies are enslaved, our minds are free. If you have fruit with pits, take one and join me. Together. These fruits with their unbreakable inner core represent our inner strength. They are a tangible token of the power to resist. We eat these fruits that, so that we may gain courage from our ancestors to find our own inner strength in difficult times. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei peri haetz. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who creates the fruit of the tree. Lila? Why do we stay hopeful when people are capable of such great evil? Few good people recognize the evil for what it was. They risked their lives to help us. They hid friends, neighbors, strangers from the eyes of those who would harm us. In almost every survivor story, there's a story of someone who helped. We remember. <laughs> Helpers lived in every country in Europe. They came from every walk of life. Some saved hundreds, some saved one. They did all they could to save as many as they could, regretting only that they could not do more. Having been their nanny for 13 years, 26 year old, Isabella Fayo swore she would protect the Aboni family. As the bombs fell on Budapest and the fascist militaries searched the streets for Jews, Elizabeth risked her life daily to find a safe place for each family member to hide. She saved us day by day. Susanna Ovat. With her partners at the secret organization Gigota, Irena Sandler smuggled thousands of Jewish children out of the Warsaw ghetto. She hid them in ambulances, snuck them through underground passages, and wheeled them out concealed in boxes and suitcases. She kept track of the children on paper buried in glass bottles, hoping someday to reunite them with their families. Every child saved with my help is the justification of my existence on this earth and not a title or glory. Irena Sandler. Our next story comes from the life of Gerda Bacalis. Gerda was born in 1931 in Germany. In 1943, she fled to France with her mother. Violet. When you think of your childhood, what comes to mind? What is uppermost in your thought? Summer camp, vacations, barbecues in the backyard. For me, it was fear. I lived in fear. It was my constant companion. I was a very young child when my father got a visa out of Germany and my mother and I 
had to do the best we could while we waited for our visas out of Germany. I had always thought of myself as German. We lived German, we spoke German, we ate German food, I played German games. But when Hitler came into power, suddenly we began to be reminded that we were lesser than Germans, that we didn't have the same rights, that all we were were Jews. And when they said it, they spat the word. I was afraid to play with the neighborhood children. I was afraid of their parents. I was afraid to go to the store. And because my mother was not able to work, we soon ran out of things to sell and had to leave no matter what. So my mother gathered what she could and she paid a man to get us over the border into France. When we left, we couldn't take very much with us because you see, no one was supposed to know that we were leaving because people were disappearing on the streets. A Jewish family would be there one day and the next day gone. And none of our neighbors would say a thing. It was as if they never existed. Fear. More fear on top of fear. So when my mother said we were going over the mountains into France, it was just the life that I was living. So we left. Made it into France. But we had no papers. We were non-people. We didn't exist there either. And when you don't exist, you can't exactly get a job. You can't go out and buy the things you need. You need to find a network of someone to help in some way. Because you see, a little child needs clothes. A little child needs food. And my mother, Bonia, was looking after me. And I was uppermost in her mind. We got into a connection with other Jewish families in the community. And we were able to get an apartment, but I use that term very loosely. It was a hole, a hovel. There were bugs, there were rats, there were spiders. It was not a healthy environment, but it's all we could get because remember, we didn't exist. And in Vichy, France, the government did what the Germans told them to do. Now, one of the things that they were doing was they set up a network for Jews, French Jews, in the town of Lyon, where you could go once a week, once a month, whatever, to get coupons for food, clothing. But while you did that, we were also doing networking with each other because everyone wanted a visa and we wanted out of there. So we did what we could to take care of each other quietly and right under the noses of the Vichy government. My mother would stretch things as much as she could. It was too, too much taking our lives in our hands to go out every day. I couldn't go to school, so we stayed in our little rat infested rooms and we encouraged each other. But then the food ran out, the money ran out, whatever bit we had. And my mother knew she had to go. So one morning, 1943, February 1943, I remember how cold it was that day. Um, my clothing was very thin. And in Lyon, France, it does get very cold. We bundled up as best we could and we left. And we went to number 13, Rue St. Catherine. 
which is where the office of the local Jewish committee was. I remember holding tight onto my mother's hand. If she was going to be taken, I was going with her. I would not lose her. So we stood together, walked in, went up the stairs, deep breath, keep going forward. Well, at the top of the stairs, there was a young woman who was cleaning the banisters and, and around. And we went on to go around her and she made eye contact with my mother. And she made a sign. Without a second thought, my mother swung around, drug me down the stairs, out the door, straight back to our apartment, and we hid. And our instincts for preservation were very wise. We learned later that the Gestapo had raided that office. They had taken 86 people, 84 of which were deported. And out of all of those, only three survived. Men, women, and children. We didn't know who that woman was. We, we'd never seen her before. She wasn't Jewish. She was just a French woman. No one knew. We never saw her there. But what we did know is because she took her life in her hands by warning us, she saved our lives. She saved our lives. She saved my children's lives. She saved the lives of my grandchildren. And for that, I blessed her every day and I still do. She was our angel at number 13 Rue St. Catherine, Lyons, France. Where, where she got the strength, I don't know. But because she was our helper, we are alive and so are you. Thank you, Violet. <clears throat> we honor the helpers so that we may gain wisdom from them. We must always strive for the courage to help those in need. Now we're still on Zoom, so we still can't be next to each other. So reach your hand to me. And from a distance, we will help each other. Read with me. We reach hand to wrist as if pulling each other to safety. Each person's decision to help was difficult. The risks were many. Would we have made such a decision? We cannot know. We cannot judge. In gratitude and hope, we honor the helpers. We draw inspiration from them and vow never to be indifferent to the plight of others. Strength comes to those who pursue justice. Jennifer? We remember. Liberation eventually came. As the armies of the world moved toward vanquishing evil, they discovered a hell that left them stunned. It will be a time of trouble, as has never been before. At that time, your people will be rescued. Daniel. Read together. We must remember the affliction of our people so that no people shall ever suffer such a fate again. 
we are commanded to provide comfort wherever there is suffering. For you know the heart of the stranger since you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Exodus. Read responsibly. How do we ensure that no one ever suffers such a fate again? We resolve to strengthen the world through our commitment to justice. We say, le olam lo od, never again. Never again shall we ignore the gathering shadows of hate. Le olam lo od. Never again shall we stay silent at the preaching of malice. Le olam lo od. Never again shall we excuse those who hate. Le olam lo od. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who girds Israel with strength. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, ozer Yisrael bigevura. Never again shall we stand and watch while people are mistreated. Leolam laod. Never again shall we allow groups of people to be separated and made unequal. Leolam laod. Never again shall we watch a community plant the seeds of hate and do nothing. Leolam laod. Baruch ata adonai. Eloheinu melech haolam matir asurim. Blessed are you, Adonai God, rule of the universe, who frees the captive. Never again shall we think we are helpless to stop the coming of evil. Le olam lo od. Never again shall we forget our own strength. Le olam lo od. Never again shall we allow hatred to go unanswered. Le olam lo od. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who commands us to pursue justice. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu, melech haolam, asher kedeshanu v'mitzvotav v'tzivanu, lirdof sedek. Violet. A question stands stark before us. How do we move forward when we have lost so much? Please join me. We walk with a hole in our heart and wait in our footsteps, but we walk forward. We are reduced, but we refuse to remain broken. We remember, while the world counted their dead, we counted our living. Those who lived gave us strength to love again. In the displaced persons camp near Munich, Frania Brat married Boris Bloom five months after liberation. Their hand-printed wedding invitations listed both their hometown and the death camps that they had survived. Their daughter, Toa, was one of many babies born in the camp that year. We didn't know what would come next. We only knew we could no, not go back to the life we once lived. We brought our children and our hope out of hiding. Let us once again restore hope and joy openly to our lives. Let us now return our notes that we hid symbols of our hope for our future, our children to the table. If you hit a note, bring it back out now. Turn it over and on the back, write a positive step you can take to make that hope or any other a reality. 
If you want, you can share your hopes and or steps with all of us in the chat. Lila? We remember as we emerged from the rubbles of our lives, we were united by an ancient hope. Hatikva, the expression of that hope is a song that has bolstered us in times of joy and in times of sorrow. It was the Claritin we all, when we dreamed of a better life, a life of freedom, a land of our own, even while trapped in slavery. Rise with me for the singing of Hatiba. So if you can't rise because of the um, camera, that's okay too. Um, so we're gonna do something a little different for Hatik for this year, something kind of special. We are going to sing along to a very special recording recorded in 1945 of survivors at the liberation of Bergen-Belsen singing Hatikva. As you might imagine, the audio, audio quality isn't great, but um, we, I think we can accommodate it. Um, but something else we need to mention before we start singing with them is that before the creation of the State of Israel, the words of Hatikva were slightly different, particularly in the last two lines of the chorus. And you can see that here, they're in red. Um, so, so when we, if you know the song, when we get to it, um, pay attention to those last two long lines because we're going to sing the original words as seen here along with the survivors. <laughs> Wait, sorry. <laughs> As long as the Jewish spirit is yearning deep in the heart with eyes toward East, looking toward Zion, then our hope, our ancient hope will not be lost. To return to the land of our fathers, the city where David encamped. Please be seated. With hope in our hearts, we step out of the darkness and into the light of renewed life. <clears throat> Let's say together. As we were all at Sinai, so we are all the children of survivors. Kakatuv, vehigadata rabincha beoto hayom. Biglal asher asa adonai li, kasher otsieti mimitzraim. 
as it is written in the Torah, and you shall tell your child on that day, it is because of what Adonai did for me when I went free from Egypt. Exodus. Violet, would you lead us through the Shekianu and the Kiddush? We say the Shekianu to give thanks that we have made it to this time and place. We say it here because although much was lost, we survived. And that survival is worthy of celebration. We drink a cup of wine to celebrate our rebirth. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam shehekianu vikimanu dihigimanu lazman hazeh. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei pari hagafen. Lechayim. Our final story comes from the life of Tula Wallach. Tula was born in Lodz in Poland in 1923. In 1944, she was deported to Auschwitz with her mother, who was murdered there. When? It was in the early 1990s. I went to Yad Vashem to meet the restoration person there. And I gave him this little sachet. It was filled with crumbs of plastic and glass. That sachet had the crumbs of my mother's glasses. I had those glasses with me since we were separated in Auschwitz on the train tracks. My mother went up to the gases and I found the glasses in the pocket of my jacket. Those glasses were with me when I was liberated. The glasses were with me when I came to Israel and when I got married and when I had children. And now my children have children. And the glasses were crumbling and crumbling. And at some point I realized that if I keep this little sachet of crumbs, one day when I'm gone, who will know what these crumbs are? So the best thing to do was to give them to Yad Vashem. So I went to Yad Vashem and I met the restoration man. And I said to him, this is my mother, please take care of her. Thank you, Lynn. Our joy in our survival is tempered by the tears for those we lost. They left no footprints, no fingerprints. All we have is memory. Read with me. In this moment, we acknowledge that they lived. As long as we remember them, they are with us. Jennifer, would you read the poem for us? They are gone. They are gone. They cannot tell their stories any longer, but we can. We can hold open the window, this fragile window we can give their stories wings. Let us give their stories a voice so they can fly into others' ears, into others' hearts. Only we can tell their stories now, only we. The survivors entreat us 
I ask you not to forget the dead. I ask you to build a memorial in our names, a monument reaching up to the heavens that the entire world might see. Not a monument of marble or stone, but one of good deeds. I believe with full and perfect faith that only such a monument can promise a better future. Only thus can we be sure that the evil that overturned the world and turned our lives into hell will never return. Donia Rosen, Ukraine. Let us remember them as they lived. As we contemplate their pictures, we mourn the stories cut short, the hopes and dreams lost. We speak their names so they will not be forgotten. Some people in these photos are not named, reminding us that although some stories are lost, we still acknowledge the people who live them. For these, we simply say, unknown. If you have names that you would like us to read, please put them in the chat. Michael, you're muted. Thank you. Florica Liebman. Bella Rodinatsky. Boris Zaitin, Maria Zaitin, Unknown, Hanna Joskowitz, Zunia Joskowitz, Gabor Newman, Joseph Draudo, Zvi Siegel. I'm Rick Swark, Aaron Goldman Bodner, Mara Koblick, Marguerite Jacoby, Henrik Jacoby, Eileen Weiss, Helga Ham, Arthur Rubin, Truda Rubin, William Wolf Zed Cohn. And from the chat, the grandparent and father of Arbit Blatas. Deborah Werner, Cecil Friund, Riva Joshua David Essia Schrero, the family of Elie Wiesel, Rose Plotz Honshak, Joseph Lifshen, Morris Stern's wife and children, Lisa Schmolson, Chaim Lifshen. Let us pause for a moment of silent reflection. Lynn, would you lead us through Kaddish? If you have a Yurtzeit candle, please light it now. Okay. 
we did not die alone. We say Kaddish not only for our own dead, but also for the many who were murdered alongside us. Romani people, gay people, those with disabilities and voices of resistance, all murdered in the great silencing of diversity, speech and opposition. We feel their loss as we gather and mourn our own immeasurable losses. Itkadal v'itkadash shemei rabba. Ba'alma dibara kerauta v'yamlich malchuta b'chayichun u'b'chayichun u'b'chayi b'chol b'et Yisrael b'agala u'b'zman kariv v'imru amen. Yehe shema rabba mevorach l'olam v'lo'olmei almaya. Itbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'er והתרומם והתנשא, והתהדר והתעלה, והתהלל שמי דקודשה בריחו. להלה מכל ברכתה ושירתה, תשבחתה ונחמתה, דאמרן בעלמה, ואמרו אמן. יהא שלמה רבה מן שמיא, וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו. הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל בית ישראל, ואמרו אמן. May the one who brings peace around the world bring peace to all of us and to all who mourn. Amen. We remember, in the starving times, we dreamed of cooking in the kitchens of home. In the aftermath, when we contemplated all that had been lost, it was the recipes of those lost kitchens that comforted us. Violet, would you read the poem for us? We reached out and touched nothing. We turned inward instead. Our memories kept us moving forward, our memories of home and of bread. We cannot return home, it's rubble. We cannot hold family, they're gone. But today, today we will have dumplings and tomorrow we will live on. Michael, would you lead us through Kiddush and through Motsi? In the abundance of our brightest lives, the sharing of scraps in the darkest times, communities rise with the sharing of bread. Our ancestors understood this. Let all who are hungry come and eat. Let all who are needy come and celebrate with us. Let us take up that call to share our friendship with all who are in need. As we break bread together, we give thanks for our survival, acknowledging that we are no more deserving than those who did not survive. We celebrate the Jewish community that continues to thrive and the community that we have created with us here today. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hamotzi Lecha Min Haaretz. Awaken, awaken, put on your strength, O Zion. We awaken to a world where human beings have done unfathomable evil to each other, to us. What do we do now? We weep and we ask, how do we go on living after so much loss? We are commanded to choose life. We remember that our ancestors held on to love and life and hope, even in the harshest times. We know that the thread of Jewish life is strong. As survivors say, 
grandchildren are the best revenge. Overwhelmed by the enormity of the story, we whisper, I don't want to hear any more. We draw inward to comfort one another, and yet we know ignoring evil only allows it to grow. Despite our unease, we choose not to be blind. We choose awareness because we recognize that evil does not need our help, just our indifference. Hans Lu Lunebich. We cry out in anger. How could this happen? Where was the world? We remember not only the evil of those who hurt us, but also the goodness of those who helped us. We resolve to turn our anger into passionate drive to repair the, to repair the world. Awakened, we inquire, how does hatred grow? Can we stop it? Hatred grows when we ignore it, when we allow hurtful behavior to go unchallenged. We will not let evil hide in the shadows. We will resolve to shine a spotlight on hate and make it clear that such behavior is not acceptable. We will be vocal torchbearers of love. Violet and Lila, would you lead us through an affirmation for the future? Please read responsibly with us. I pray for courage and for strength. When I remember the evils in the past, the innocent people tortured and murdered, I'm almost afraid to make myself remember, but I am even more afraid to forget. I ask for wisdom, that I might mourn and not be consumed by hatred, that I might remember and yet not lose hope. I must face evil, and so doing reaffirm my faith in future good. I cannot erase yesterday's pains, but I can vow that they will not have suffered in vain. And so I pray for those who were given death I choose life for me, for generations yet to come. For those who found courage to stand against evil, often at the cost of their lives, I vow, vow to carry on their struggle. I must teach myself and others to learn from hatred that people must love, to learn from evil, to live for good. We recognize that despite our best efforts, there is still evil in the world. People are still persecuted for who they are. Anger and hatred continue to seep into our communities. Nonetheless, we proclaim that there is hope. We can make a difference. We can help. Without justice, there can be no peace. He who passively accepts evil is as much involved in it as he who helps to perpetrate it. Martin Luther King Jr. To stem the flow of hatred, we must work for justice. For as Isaiah tells us, the work of justice shall be peace. Across the world, we are many different people. We speak many different languages. Peace is a gift we can give in every language. Salam, hewa, dalom. Erini, mir, chongwa. Ritur, asiti, frieden. Mero, Santa Pepe, pahe. Hey, Samye, Shanti, 
Bizani. Ache. We cannot change the past, but we can build our future. Do not be daunted by the world's grief, by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justly now. Love chesed now. Walk humbly now. You are not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to abandon it. Rami Shapiro. We must remember that peace and justice are not gifts from God. They are our gifts to each other. So say with me now, we pledge ourselves to work for peace and justice throughout the world. Justice, justice, we shall pursue. Sedek, Sedek, Nirdoff. Jennifer, would you read this for us? A day will come. A day will come when the softest sounds will be enough. When one lingering note, a delicate dance between two hands, a leaf spinning in the breeze. When one ringing bell, when one whispered poem will be enough to awaken each person from that which is concealed, to bless this holy human with wisdom that bursts from the sacred well of justice, from the sweet, hearty, bubbling subterranean spring that nourishes the tree of life. Our God and God of our ancestors, God of our fathers and our mothers, of our living and our dead, hold this people in your hand, keep us safe, and help us find the sacred well of justice that dwells within each of us. Help us to create a just world for all people in all places. Can you hear that song? Can you hear that song? <sighs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to our readers and our storytellers. Uh, thank you also to Berman House Congregation Kolomi and the International School for Holocaust Studies at Yad Vashem for support and inspiration. And thank you for coming and for participating. And Deborah, thank you um, from the depths of our hearts for creating this meaningful ritual story. I'm speechless, I'm so moved. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so please join us on Wednesday and Thursday for two special nights of storytelling, including Violet giving us a more complete telling of Gerda Bakelis's story. Um, can, we'll put the links for that in the chat if you haven't yet registered. So we hope to see you there. And Deborah, may I add that several people in this um, event, including, as you heard, Violet and Lynn, um, I know Tanya and Leora are here. Um, they will be telling at these events. So please, if you are touched by these incredible storytellers, imagine getting to hear longer versions and more gifted tellers. I believe Rebecca is here as well. And oh, she Rebecca. She yes, Rebecca Fripp will also be telling quite beautifully. Wonderful. All right. So... Thank you so much. I'm going to stop and good night. Good night, Lila Tove. Be well. <laughs>